Regarding the question of transport, it's very simple. One, Sid will always drive us in his van. Two, Ivy won't let him. Three, we've got no transport. Of course, when I was in the army, I simply had to lift the phone and order my jeep. I never had a jeep. I had a jeep. Oh, I bet it had a bell on and pedals. <laughs> What would a boxy corporal say that I had to be doing with a jeep? It's unfair of you to ask me military questions when you know my lips are still sealed by the provisions of the Official Secrets Act. General Patton had a jeep, too, with pearl handles. <laughs> I don't see what we're worried about transport for any road. We're not off anywhere. Hey! Oh, no. <laughs> Go, Go on. But if we had transport, we might have decided to go somewhere. We might have got up this morning, looked out over all them hills, thought how boring, and decided to go somewhere. Where? Well, I was speaking generally. Hypothetically, if you like. There's no reason for you to be demanding specific details in your tatty hat. Oh. Right. Well, of course, his judgment's gone to pieces. He's bound to feel a certain... Family nervousness standing this close to a police station. I've got nothing to hide. Correction, you have got something to hide. It's just that you're so damn careless about hiding it. You fail to understand something, Constable. You are talking to somebody not altogether unknown to certain colleagues of yours in Stoke on Trent. You have no business dealing oh, with me in this fashion at all. I'm not Unless a common criminal. It's a lot you haven't heard the last of this. You'll be receiving a communication from my solicitor. He's the biggest puff in Stoke on Trent. <laughs> Why don't you try interviewing him? Police corruption, that's what it is. Corruption and sheer brutality. I've never heard anything like it. Out of the way, boss! Oh, 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 my God. I think... Oh, that's a novelty. A token notice board. <laughs> the nerves are all shot. Well, of course they're all shot. I've just had the most unpleasant interview with Starsky and Hutch in there. <laughs> well, it's a that will never be as funny as Hitler and Hitler. Adolf and Heine. <laughs> Two in Europe in the early 40s. A gag, a goose and a song. Oh, you don't get any better. It's kind of you to say so. <laughs> well, Compo, eh? <laughs> Compo, Simonite. <laughs> I thought you were there. I thought, that's him, I coming up the porky. <laughs> the interview room. Have you the pardon? That's all I was coming out of, the interview room. <laughs> Nothing criminal, just a small civil misunderstanding. <laughs> well, what you all doing living in that old notice board? I mean, I knew times was hard. <laughs> Ma, you come, boy, you look well. I it? like your I mean, it be good, considering your overall state of health. I think you look better, eh? What, what, what was all that? <laughs> I'm sorry, Funky, I forgot you didn't know, Amos. I haven't had that pleasure. Oh, you'll love Amos. He's a laugh a minute. Yes, I'm not sure I'm so easily taken in by that kind of superficial charm. <laughs> Amos! Foggy Dewhurst. Foggy Dewhurst? Sounds like an industrial disease. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, then. Say I do. <laughs> I don't need your two, Penneth. It's not exactly love at first sight. <laughs> Look, I... No, 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 just, just a minute. Just a minute. 
can see what's happened. Your strap's not caught in mine. I know. But you, but Look, why don't oh, we but... just why don't we just stand still? Hmm? Well, that's what I was about to suggest. <laughs> Why don't we go for a quick one? Did you see that man? He could have had the entire sleeve off. He's not going to bear a grudge, is he? Don't worry yourself. It's just that he's a bit uh, tall. I mean, in, in some quarters, he could be regarded as a big fella. Ex regular, are He's not, is he? Karate expert! Oh my god. <laughs> Don't worry, I still favor. He's just a big fairy. Mm, damn nasty, some of these fairies. How <laughs> 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 long's they been back, Benny Bush? Oh, I'm just here for the day. <clears throat> we used to see the man now and again. She liked to complain about her ankles. Oh, uh, she had terrible ankles. Fluid. Pardon? It would be fluid. What's he on about? Fluid on the ankles. That's what it'd be. Causes swelling. Very common complaint. Swollen ankles. <laughs> Even horses get it. Ah, that's why the man never got better, Amos. You should have had her under the vet. <laughs> He's full of tact, your maid, isn't he? Suggesting that my mother suffers from a mayor's complaint. I implied no such thing. You did you Talking say? of a mayor's complaint, have you seen that latest photograph of the lady mayoress? Uh -huh. <laughs> well, I was merely pointing out the similarity between the human and the equine foot. What's an equine foot? Twelve inches and a bit, and the bit goes between the teeth for steering purposes. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's all right, Clegg. You just talk among yourself. <laughs> ah, I think it's time for another round. Uh, not for me, thanks. Mm. Yes, well, uh, quite often, on Tuesdays, back in the barracks, we used to gather in the PM's hut and do our blanker. Well, that doesn't surprise me in the least. <laughs> the Chirping Corporal Sidewriter. Master of the Gothic script. Good hand with a pen, is he? I won the Northern Command free-handed talent trophy with a little thing I knocked up for the adjutant's Christmas party. Wow. Penmanship, you know, that is a skill I have always admired. I'd love to trace out a picture of our beloved Queen. Hmm? Oh, I think that's very commendable. Oh, yes. In all her robes, you know, very regal. Just how she looks on five pound notes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, your ma'am uh, says you've been living in Stoke on Trent. Oh, only for a time. I've um, I've been moving about a bit. Here. Well, I'm glad about that. You don't like to think of anybody being long in Stoke-on-Trent. <laughs> Our Wendy had thick ankles. <laughs> she tried everything: massage, exercise, shoplifting. <laughs> well, that were only because she was depressed. Oh, I see. Yeah. Would that be when she was caught in the co-op or when she was caught in the Chelsea Swinger Boutique? I don't remember. I expect it to be the co-op. I suppose everybody gets a bit depressed in a co-op. <laughs> I know I did. Well, uh, what are they after me for, they may have boss? Yeah. Who? The, uh, the constables? <laughs> oh, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, <clears throat> A trivial uh, misunderstanding. <laughs> right. Bit shifty, isn't he? He can't be all that bad. He's getting around it. I trust you to be impressed by the moral factor. Look, I don't want to enter into a technical discussion about whether Amos is or is not a criminal. Let's start from the first principles of common humanity and check and see whether you've still got your wallet. 
What are you talking about? Did I, I put it away? Oh. It's all paid for. <laughs> uh, I've been away all these years, scratching for a living among the even. I come back, and in five minutes, here I am, accepted. <laughs> That's what I call friendliness and trust. Shall we drink to that? Friendliness and trust. Uh, uh, friendliness. friendliness and trust. trust. Friendliness and trust. <laughs> Six to three. Talk your cue like that. Yes, and where's he learned it all? If you don't pick this up unless you're in some very funny company. What makes me shudder is I nearly suggested playing for money. <laughs> I wouldn't mind not playing at all if I could just chalk my cue like that. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. 71. I suppose this is how the big jobs are planned. Hmm? You know, they, they thrash out the details over innumerable games of snooker. I wouldn't have minded being a famous criminal. You know, keeping a greyhound and a bird in the flat with big knockers. <laughs> they mostly have doorbells. <laughs> I, I would have bought her a white telephone. Oh, yeah, very suitable considering your sort of language. Like an inflammable ashtray. So, yeah. red into that pocket, then the white up there, ready for another black. All right, partner. <laughs> Listen, okay. you sit there being sceptical in this hallowed atmosphere of stale beer and billiard chalk. But what big jobs do you mean? I mean, what big jobs are planned over innumerable games of snooker? Payrolls. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Why should anyone be doing payrolls and banks? <laughs> uh, listen, the corner of Epworth Street. Is that bank still open? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever are you doing? I'm sorry, it just seemed as though somebody walked over me safe. <laughs> me brain. <laughs> Me mum always said on occasions like this it were good for the carpet. Well, your mum ought to know she went down on more carpets than anybody else did. <laughs> I'm perfectly all right, don't force. It's just that my left ventricle suddenly did a flip. I could feel it fluttering against my rib cage like some wild Australian budgie. A real ocker. That's just how my late company commander went. Well, as an orca, uh, drinking beer in his undershirt from a can, uh, calling everybody Sheila. Uh, uh, oh, now, look. Well, uh, uh, don't start talking in small groups and low tones. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. It's, it, that, that's voodoo. Yes, it, it, I've seen it happen time and time again round here. Some poor devil in bed, and then a little group falls, all talking in low tones. And the next thing you know, they're riding in big cars to the funeral. Oh. Oh. Mm. It has to be faced. It's no good shirking it. Look, it was only a slight flutter. <laughs> I'm not going to die, am I? We've talked it over. And we've decided that under the circumstances, it's only fair that you should pay for the glass. <laughs>
It's hardly changed at all. Do you know that? Why do you want to know about the bank, Amos? Why don't you just ask him straight out? What are you getting so coy about? It was you who started it. Why do you want to know about the bank, Amos? I don't want him alarming unnecessarily. If he suspects we know anything, we could all finish up down some dark alley. Hey, up I started down some dark alley. What's wrong with dark alleys? <laughs> I were a slum child and don't they forget it. Yes, well, I shouldn't boast about it. It's hard as a kennel club, is it? No. <laughs> but it were a bit like a kennel. I remember your mum used to bite postman. <laughs> she was sick of receiving begging letters. Your mother got begging letters? All the time from people begging her to stop writing begging letters. <laughs> Why are you looking at the bank, eh, Moss? It's no business of ours, eh, Moss? Of course it's our business. Do you know what a small depositor is? I mean, in addition to your ferrets. Of course I know what a small depositor is. Well? There's a bit more traffic than there used to be. <laughs> Hurry up, he's planning his getaway. Get away. That's it, you've got it. Now, what is a small depositor? Ah, oh, shut up, I'm thinking. Thinking? If the iron's your brain flat, it wouldn't make a decent beer mat. <laughs> a small deposit is a man in the street who happens to have a few pounds in the bank. I knew that. He's a liar. Now we're getting somewhere. You're a liar. Right. And Foggy's a small depositor. Very small. <laughs> and my money is in that bank. So you see why it is my business. If your criminal former companion is thinking of absconding with the contents, where is he? Oh, my God. In broad daylight. He's only looking. That's true, Foggy. We don't know that he actually plans to do it. Hmm? Did he have a bulge? Pardon? <laughs> In his armpit. Well, I don't suppose he'd feel much like robbery, Foggy, if he's got mumps. <laughs> His weapon, you fool. I'll serve you in a minute, Mrs. Batty. I think this white car came in first. <laughs> it's not ours. We've never seen it before. It just followed us here. I will try to speak into it, Ashley. Yes, I heard you. And I thank you never to employ that vocabulary again quite so close to my sniper's ear. No, what? Sniper's ear. It's been trained to pick up every sound. And I heard that. <laughs> and the other bit of all when three men came in backwards. It's the first time in 20 years three men have ever come in backwards. Ah, uh, you did turn your back on them runaway cars, they'll have you. The only thing to do is to uh, stare them straight in the headlights. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. It's not right. What are you doing at the woman? 
I was staring at her straight in the headlight. <laughs> I knew there'd be trouble when they painted them double yellow lines down the street. They can't park outside, so now I've got the first drive-in chip shop in Yorkshire. <laughs> Oh, well, your prices have always been fairly mobile. <laughs> There's no bit of value around here. As an instructor, take over? No, I don't think so. Oh, it must be awful for them. Day after day, putting their life in the hands of some learner's feet. Yeah. Her from Digby's cleaner said her instructor was that nervous she couldn't stop him grabbing her leg. I've heard about that one. Uh, with a small beard from Arnold Street. Still, he keeps getting them through. Yeah. Oh. oh, she's too old to learn, bless her. I don't think you can cope with the highway code once you're going through her time of life. <laughs> it's true. Nothing new comes natural after your 45th birthday. <laughs> My husband's just wasted 425 on an illustrated sex manual to find that out. Do you want to sell it? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> all alike. They expect life to be all model trains and cheating nighties. Oh. Is it fully illustrated? You must be joking. I couldn't eat solid food for a week. Oh, I wish you'd hurry up. God knows what your friend Amos is up to under cover of all this excitement. We'd better get out of the way. If she's not in reverse when she lets that lock go, she'll be coming through here at about 90. <laughs> Bridges. Oh, we're back there somewhere. <laughs> what have you been doing to Nora Betty? I tried to press her to take a warm chip. <laughs> Just one, not a great answer. No, thank you. I don't eat chips in the street. <laughs> Where does he eat them, then? In the quiet of his lonely room, behind locked doors. Oh, ho, oh, oh. ho. The wonder he has to wear glasses. <laughs> right. Now, where's Amos? Oh, well, uh... He doesn't seem to be here. Mm -hmm. Right. Doesn't seem to be here, either. I know he's not here, but where is he? Well... Maybe he's um, gone for a coffee. In a bank? Oh, no, not in a bank. Who says he's in a bank? We left him staring at the bank, casing it. Hey, oh, casing it up at the Godfather. Your imagination is getting overheated, Foggy. I mean, just look at this bank. Any self-respecting market trader has a wallet bigger than that. What he's saying, Felix, is why should anybody come all the way from Stoke on Trent to do a little country bank like this? Yeah, that wouldn't even pay for their petrol. God, they're going to walk straight into the waiting arms of your your friend Amos. Well, don't do anything hasty, Foggy. I'll go and see if he's in there. You would do nothing except under my command. This is an emergency. Are you 
to station yourself on that corner and prevent innocent civilians from walking into the line of fire. Oh, Ecky Stripes are showing again. It's not the fifth Gurkhas you've got to play with, Foggy. He, he's got an unemployed bad back, and I'm a redundant lino salesman. <laughs> Just take your cue from me. I am determined to seize the moment. Halt! That man, that's far enough. I order you to take that money back into the van. Oh! oh, oh, oh. No, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm on your side. What the hell's going on? It's Foggy seizing the moment. <laughs> How many were they? Oh, just some lone desperado. Uh, terrible staring eyes. They look like some sort of lunatic to me. <laughs> yes, yes, he did. minutes in there they were very suspicious it was as though the name dewhurst counted for nothing didn't they know it was a byword for being crackers <laughs> <laughs> and where were you when the chips were down oh, it's funny you should say that potato prices keep falling but how often do you find that the chips are down <laughs> i finally established my innocence by means of a phone call to my solicitor who responded promptly by saying, Dewhurst? Do I know Dewhurst? But it was only when I reminded him that I'd once tried to engage him regarding the possibility of our making a citizen arrest of one of those damned Russian spy trawlers that draw his fishing inside our limits. It was only then that he remembered me. And he said, Oh, that Dewhurst. Fine thanks you'll get for a public spirited gesture. <laughs> oh, that man! That's far enough! Oh, you... Here, where is he, you Ben friend? You have not lost sight of him again, have you? Oh, my God, he'll be running amok in the high street, ripping off everything to find. He went back home to Stoke-on-Trent. <laughs> For the rest of his natural life, perhaps. I wonder how many ever get paroled from Stoke-on-Trent. Ah. Oh, he, uh, he sent his regards. I wonder why it is there are some spots you could squeeze and some spots you can't. <laughs> There are very few spots on you, Mom, would care to squeeze. <laughs> I met pimples. Oh, how fascinating. We were married all them years and never had children. Do you think flannelette causes impotence? <laughs> the funny thing about civilian life, you can't keep your boots clean. Does that believe in acupuncture? For cleaning boots, no. <laughs> For headaches. Well, I believe if you had your head stabbed often enough with a needle, it would give you a headache. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose to cure headaches. Well, that's Chinese propaganda. They thrashed us at table tennis. Oh, I see. The secret Chinese bat was V-shaped, eh? <laughs> Their bones are not as tough as the Anglo-Saxons. Orientals bend easier. This gives them a natural advantage at certain sports and in the enjoyment of 
extremely primitive sanitary arrangements. <laughs> Even then it makes their eyes slant. <laughs> What's all this about acupuncture and headaches? Have you got a headache? No. But I was filled with wonder at the idea that if I did have an headache, some little Chinese herbal could come along and cure it in a flash by sticking a needle in my kneecap. <laughs> and another in your welly. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Chinese go about fiddling with needles because they haven't got aspirin up to British standards. Well, they've got the axe bomb. Yes, but they've got no bomb to deliver it with. The enemy is due to get it. We'll have to go and fetch it. <laughs> Put a Chinese takeaway. <laughs> Are you sure your dubious friend Amos really has gone home? He's gone home. So what was he doing in the bank? Well, he went in to see if they remembered him. He wanted to catch a check, but they wouldn't. Oh, so they did remember him. Well, it don't matter any road. Peggy cashed it for him. <laughs> you cashed a check for him? You didn't. You can't have a bit of confidence in people, Foggy. view. Shane Fletch can't enjoy it. Ronnie Barker's doing porridge tonight at nine on UK TV Gold. More comedy on the way next here, though. Stay put for misguided Marxist mayhem from Citizen Smith. question of transport, it's very simple. One, Sid will always drive us in his van. Two, Ivy won't let him. Three, we've got no transport. Of course, when I was in the army, I simply had to lift the phone and order my jeep. I never had a jeep. I had a jeep. Oh, I bet it had a bell on and pedals. <laughs> What would a bookshe corporal sign I to be doing with a jeep? It's unfair of you to ask me military questions when you know my lips are still sealed by the provisions of the Official Secrets Act. <laughs> General Patton had a jeep, too, with pearl handles. <laughs> I don't see what we're worried about transport for any road. We're not off anywhere. Hey! Oh, no! Oh, wait. Go on. But if 
if we had transport, we might have decided to go somewhere. We might have got up this morning, looked out over all them hills, thought how boring, and decided to go somewhere. Where? Well, I was speaking generally, hypothetically, if you like. There's no reason for you to be demanding specific details in your tatty hat. Oh, right. Well, of course, his judgment's gone to pieces. He's bound to feel a certain family nervousness standing this close to a police station. <laughs> I've got nothing to hide. Correction, you have got something to hide. It's just that you're so damn careless about hiding it. You fail to understand something, Constable. You are talking to somebody not altogether unknown to certain colleagues of yours in Stoke on Trent. You know this. Oh, no. Unless a common criminal. You haven't heard the last of this. You'll be receiving a communication from my solicitor. He's the biggest puff in Stoke on Trent. Why are you trying interviewing him? Police corruption, that's what it is. Corruption and sheer brutality. I've never heard anything like it. Out of the way, Oh, my God. I think... Oh, that's a novelty. A talking notice board. <laughs> the nerves are all shot. Well, of course they're all shot. I've just had the most unpleasant interview with Starsky and Hutch in there. <laughs> that was a that will never be as funny as Hitler and Hitler. Adolf and Heine. <laughs> Two in Europe in the early 40s. A gag, a goose and a song. Oh, you don't get any better. It's kind of you to say so. <laughs> well, Compo, eh? <laughs> Compo, Simonite. <laughs> I thought you were there. I thought, that's he, boss, coming up the pokey. <laughs> the interview room. And with the one? That's all I was coming out of, the interview room. <laughs> Nothing criminal, just a small civil misunderstanding. <laughs> well, what you all doing living in that old notice board? I mean, I knew times was hard. <laughs> Mark, you come, boy, you look well. I like your oh, socks. I mean, it'd be good, considering your overall state of health. I think you look better. Hey, what, what, what was all that? I'm sorry, Foggy, I forgot you didn't know, Amos. I haven't had that pleasure. Oh, you'll love Amos. He's a laugh a minute. Yes, I'm not sure I'm so easily taken in by that kind of superficial charm. <laughs> Amos! Foggy Dewurst. Foggy Dewurst? Sounds like an industrial disease. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, then. Say how do. They don't need your two, Penneth. It's not exactly love at first sight. Look, I... No, no, just, just a minute, just a minute. You see what's happened? Your scratch got caught in mine. I know. But, no, Look, why don't no, we but, just why don't we just stand still? Well, that's what I was about to suggest. <laughs> <laughs> why don't we go for a quick one? <laughs> Did you see that man? Well, he, he could have had the entire sleeve off. <laughs> Not on a bad a grudge, is he? Don't worry yourself. It's just that he's a bit uh, tall. I mean, in, in some quarters, he could be regarded as a big fella. Ex-regular, Arby. He's not, is he? Karate expert. Oh, my God. <laughs> Don't worry yourself, Amos. He's just a big fairy. Mm, damn nasty, some of these fairies. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> How long have you been back then, Amos? Oh, I'm just here for the day. <clears throat> we used to see the man now and again. She liked to complain about her ankles. Oh, she had terrible ankles. Fluid. Pardon? It would be fluid. What's he on about? Fluid on the ankles. That's what it'd be. Cause his swelling. Very common complaint. Swollen ankles. Yeah. <laughs> Even horses get it. 
Ah, uh, that's why the man never got better, Amos. You should have had her under the vet. <laughs> <laughs> He's full of tact, your maid, isn't he? Suggesting that my mother suffers from a man's complaint. I implied no such thing. <laughs> Talking of a mayor's complaint, have you seen that latest photograph of the lady mayoress? Uh -huh. <laughs> I was merely pointing out the similarity between the human and the equine foot. What's an equine foot? Twelve inches and a bit, and the bit goes between the teeth for steering purposes. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right, Clegg. You just talk among yourself. <laughs> I think it's time for another round. <laughs> uh, not for me, thanks. Yes, well, uh, quite often on Tuesdays back in the barracks, we used to gather in the PM's hut and do our blanket. Well, that doesn't surprise me in the least. <laughs> the Jeffy Corporal Sidewriter. Master of the Gothic script. Good at with a pen, is he? I won the Northern Command free-handed tally trophy with a little thing I knocked up for the adjutant's Christmas party. Well, penmanship, you know, that is a skill I have always admired. I'd love to trace out a picture of our beloved Queen. Hmm? Oh, I think that's very commendable. Oh, yes. In all her robes, you know, very regal. Just how she looks on five-pound notes. <laughs> yes, uh, your ma'am uh, says you've been living in Stoke-on-Trent. Oh, only for a time. I've, um, I've been moving about a bit. Oh, well, I'm glad about that. You don't like to think of anybody being long in Stoke-on-Trent. Our <laughs> <laughs> Wendy had thick ankles. <laughs> she tried everything. Massage, exercise. Shoplifting. <laughs> well, that were only because she was depressed. Oh, I see. Would that be when she was caught in the co-op or when she was caught in the Chelsea Swinger boutique? I don't remember. I expected it to be the co-op. I suppose everybody gets a bit depressed in the co-op. <laughs> I know I did. Well, er... Uh... What are they after thee for, they may boss? Who? Oh, the, uh, the constables? Oh, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a, a trivial uh, misunderstanding. 